Greetings and a warm welcome to this international online midweek service. I'm Simba, joined in the studio by my brother, Andrew. Shalom, sir. Shalom, my brother. Good to be here. Indeed. And in a few moments, we'll be joined by the great prophet to lead us on into the much anticipated subject of this evening, given to us there and then during our midweek recap of the last session that we had. And the theme for this evening is the cerebral gift. Invite your friends, let your family know that this evening we are going to have a description of a gift that many of us never thought was a gift, but it's being delivered to us by the prophet of God, the cerebral gift. So quickly, Put yourself together, bring your family together, and let's get ready to receive this phenomenal word. Now, as we build up to the start of the service, please let us know where you are watching us from. Please do let us know country, and let us know the time that you're watching this service. We want to make sure that the audio is clear and the visuals are clear, so please do give us a thumbs up to make sure your audio is coming out loud and clear, and give us a heart sign to let us know that the visuals are pristine. Tonight is our night. The subject topic is the cerebral gift. I'm excited, beyond excited, I'm thrilled that we get to learn about this particular gift, the gift of the cerebral. And what the brain is, the activity that the brain does like we learned, That activity is called the mind. We've been given a brain to choose a mind. So much, so much for us to dig into. Can you imagine that most of the challenges that people are facing are all psychological problems? From the snippet that we received, the problems that we are facing, the majority are a wisdom problem, a comprehension problem. Now remember, as the year began, our Father made it so absolutely clear that based upon your level of attention to the Word of God in this year of the God being, they will be an upgrade, a promotion from being a human to experiencing the God life. And this information is pertinent to us grabbing a hold and realizing and experiencing that reality of living a God life. And like he's always said to us, gifts that we were given, we were given this body as a gift. And total dominion and apprehension of what this body can do is part of what makes us have dominion and be powerful as God's. So as we build up to this, continue to let us know where you are watching us from. Thank you so much for those that are watching us from different parts of the world. Africa is well represented, gathered around the prophet of the nations. Thank you for those that are watching us from Asia and the Americas. Your presence is valued and you are blessed to be present in this place. Thank you all so much. You've confirmed the audio is great and the video is pristine. We'd like to carry on now. So getting to a small moment of prayer as we receive the presence of the Lord in this place, as we receive this powerful message, this cerebral gift. Now, allow me this moment to introduce our prophet. Now, greetings, our Father. Shalom, pastors. How are you doing? We're so blessed to be here. Indeed, we are blessed. I'm equally glad to be here. And thank you so much, like you said, there is need for us to pray before even the beginning of this session tonight. Father, we thank you for this uh, moment and it's a season to us that we have all been waiting for. Gathering here and getting ready to hear from you and to receive and to be partakers of 
of your power and of your influence and we are also ready to be transformed and to be changed by your word. We are at your disposal. We are clay in the hands of the potter, ready to be formed and to be reshaped. Do as you will and as you desire with our beings. In the name of Jesus, we pray that even as we broadcast this session tonight, let the life of God be spread abroad, be distributed amongst your people. We pray that victories will be experienced and joy will be experienced, blessings will flourish in every area of your life as you partake. I pray for you and I pray with you tonight that grace will look for you, it will locate you, it will find you, and it will become your portion. In Jesus' name. Pastors, I'm so glad to be here tonight, having also been equipped and prepared by God to be able to distribute his understanding, his ways of doing things. And that's a privilege to me and I'm thankful to him for that. Not because it's everything about him that I consciously know. But again, it's everything about him that we subconsciously know. But the things that we are aware of, we are given grace by God to share. That's what I'm here to do. And we are going to be talking about that mysterious activity of the physical brain. And I call it a mysterious activity because it's an activity that even scientists right up to now can not articulate. They can see changes, they can monitor uh, certain magnetic uh, movements, electrical uh, activities in the brain, but uh, it has not been possible for them to harvest thoughts and for them to be able to explain to us how they even look. This is why I'm calling the mind the mysterious part of the physical brain. We are here to discuss about that and why that is important. And as far as we are born again, it goes to show that even your misunderstanding, which is again an activity of the brain, your misunderstanding of your salvation will shortchange you. You will not excel in strength because you have received something and you have become somebody so powerful, but you are not aware of the power and the changes that have occurred. So again, your brain is going to play a very pivotal role when it comes to your victories in God. So I'm going to help you understand one of these most profound gifts ever given to creation and not just to mankind. God's creation in its entirety was given this instrument called the brain. Even things that we think do not think, they think. They are given a certain measure of reasoning so that they can, within their environment, survive. So, let's have a scripture from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, from verse number 7. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 7, verse 8 and verse 9. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. The peace which is of God. The peace that passeth all. How many understandings? All. All understanding is beyond comprehension. That's the peace of God. And remember, it is the kind of peace that again we try to understand. Yet it goes beyond all understanding. It's a kind of peace that you cannot explain. It's an unreasonable peace that even when you know that tomorrow you'll be hanged, put you in prison, and you go to bed and you sleep, it would require an angel of God to wake you up. <laughs> Rise up. It's beyond understanding why someone can be in that kind of a situation and still he finds rest. To a reasonable person, that doesn't make sense. Because it is a peace that transcends understanding. And that peace only is in the hands of God and only God can give that one. Every other type of peace nations can give, presidents can give, kings can declare. But this kind of peace <laughs> can only be given by God. So, that's the peace that he is talking about. And the peace of God, yes. which passeth all understanding. Which passeth all understanding. And he calls it the peace of who? Of God. No one else can give that one to you. Mm. It's a level of peace that no amount of education can grant you that one. No degree, no certificate can give you that one. It is the peace of God. How do you know it is of God? You investigate God. You can't be in the boat that is sinking and you sleep. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> and when Jesus came out of his sleep, he realized that there was chaos. And the peace that is of God is transferable upon the sea, be still. A sharing of that peace is given not just to humans. Even nature can be given that peace. Mm. Peace, be still. It goes to show his ability to give that peace was based on him having had it. He has it, not only to keep it to himself, but to give it to his creation. Peace, be still. And then the next thing he began to deal with his disciples, trying to also make sure that that peace is transferred. But it is the peace which is of God. And in some other places, Jesus even declares that the peace that I give you is unlike the peace that this world will ever give you. So he will continue reading now. But I just wanted people to understand there is this kind of peace that even when you know Everything about you is wrong. Your life is still stable. Mm. You go to bed and you sleep. But somebody without that kind of peace will have to wake up and find out ways of how to come out of that situation. It is the peace of God. It goes beyond all understanding. Yes. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts. That peace will keep the heart of a man. And watch what follows. Shall keep your hearts and, and minds. Minds. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. The peace of God, the peace which is of God, which is from God. Is a 
preservative agent to the heart and the mind. The heart of a man and the mind of a man can only be kept in place by that peace of God. Mm. There is that supervision role given to the peace of God to superintend the hearts of men and their minds. Though we'll get to the point where I let you know what the mind is, which is the function of the brain, of course, but that which has been thought of requires preservation, which is only by the peace of God what you have thought of, the ideas that you have come across, for that to be preserved, you require the peace of God to reign over an idea. Whether it's an idea on improving on your relationships, whether it's an idea on studying on a new project, it's an idea, it's a mind, it's a heart because it is a thought for storms not to ravage against that idea, you require the peace of God to be spoken over that thought so that it can survive several storms that are rising up against the thoughts and ideas. So, we are going somewhere. Now we have heard of the heart, we know what it is. It's talking of the emotions and a lot of things. I'll come back to that. But, The peace of God keeps your heart. The peace of God is what keeps your mind. The question, from what? What is it that is desperately coming after your heart and your mind. You can remember of scriptures that you did to keep your heart of all of the things that you have. Protect your heart, keep your heart. What is it that seeks to come after your heart? Why, why is your heart so important? Child of God, this is so critical. The mind, if you had to look into the life of Paul, when he got arrested by the power of God on his way to Damascus, he was given, his assignment was so precise, well articulated. You go out there and you deliver them from darkness into light. And if you investigate the diagnosis now, you look into the cause the disease that had bedeviled the people. For the prince of this world, the God of this world, what he had done to the people was to simply blind, blind, blind yes. the minds of the people. <laughs> so next time you hear of the devil being referred to as a thief, you must know of the most valuable assets that you keep in your body, which is your house, that he comes after, that he comes for. What is he coming to steal? Him being a thief. Which parts of your body does he target? Being an expert thief, confirmed by the Bible, that if he is to come, he will steal. He comes after your mind. Thank you. Well understood. Yes. So how do you know that a thief has broken into my property? You look for missing items. You have a thought that has gone missing. You have a mentality that you don't have though being a child of God. You 
know he is broken. You need to make a report. You know he is broken into your property. So clear. Mm. Knowing that you have just been robbed. But now in this case, what if he comes and he's coming after your mind to steal from your mind and then he steals that very part that helps you know what has been stolen. that becomes your struggle that part of you that is able to recognize changes then you know that you are doomed you need the grace of god these are moments when you tell people of what they don't have and they argue with you you tell them what they need and they argue with you the part that helps them understand what has been stolen yeah. is the part that has been stolen mm. so there's no capacity to no capacity to realize to recognize to even notice that robbery has just taken place but we are trying to help people understand how to preserve this gift because every with even with every other gift that god has given you it also requires your ability to keep it it doesn't matter the gift is as big as the garden okay yes adam had to learn to keep the garden mm-hmm. lest it gets stolen mm-hmm. every other gift so the mind the brain rather being the gift that god has given you let's get to hear again what is happening So follow me closely. We need to really take our time on this in as much as it doesn't have to be too long again. <laughs> it doesn't have to go beyond human understanding. <laughs> pray for grace. <laughs> yes, we pray for that grace indeed. Yes, keep on reading. Finally, brethren. Finally, my brothers. These are brethren. These are born again. These are believers. These people are saved. And here comes an instruction finally. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Please take note of those things. The first thing is what whatsoever things are true. true true and then whatsoever things are honest honest and whatsoever things are just just uh-huh whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are pure yes whatsoever things are lovely lovely look at the nature of all of these things mm-hmm. is leading you to something yes Whatsoever things are of good report good report mm-hmm. the report ought to be good if things are of a good report mm-hmm. uh-huh if there be any virtue if there be any virtue if there be any power mm-hmm. here comes the instruction and if there be any praise praise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. think on these think. things think 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 on these things restrict your thinking make these things your only focus before you start to wonder what is there to think about <laughs> This is your guideline. The report that you are thinking on ought to be a good report. Okay, keep on just finish. Those things which ye have both learned and received. There are things that you have learned and you've also received and you've also and heard and you've also seen. Seen in me. Do. All those are senses. Wow. <laughs> You have identified things in me. 
You have seen, you have heard. Yes, ma'am. And you have learned. Yes, yes. And I would want you to go and then you do those things that you have seen in me. These things that you are going to do, you have seen those things in me. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. <laughs> there are things in me. This is what he say. I have things contained in my body. that are there for your hearing. Things that I contain, that I keep, that you can see. Things that are there within me that you can learn and then you get on to do. Wow. What the man of God is saying is that I contain activities. Mm -hmm. You will be able to do to rise, to perform based on your observation. If you can get to see the things within me, you can get to do. This is open. Read it again, that last part. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And what will happen? And the God of peace shall be with you. Mm. Started off with peace. And peace. He shall be with you. This is a reward. And again, this is the condition. How is the man of God so sure that if I'm to do the things that I've seen in him, only then can the God of peace <laughs> be with me? He's so sure. Okay. He's so sure of what he carries. Mm -hmm. And no man can look at me, study under me, observe me and copy the things that I do and God abandons him. Mm. To be so certain that you can't see <laughs> things in me and you do what you have seen and God is not with you, then the God of peace shall be with you if you are to see these things. And he's talking about, he's already told you how to maintain the presence of God making sure that you think upon these things. Mm. The things are supposed to be honest. The things are supposed to be good. Things are supposed to be pure. Developing and cultivating your brain to a point where your thoughts become pure thoughts. Mm -hmm. In that moment of that Thoughts that are pure, what you experience is the peace of God. So let's talk about that. Let me start with you from what I've already shared with you in the past. That the scripture clearly tells us that when it comes to the comprehension of God, He's so massive, so big to an extent where our finite minds or our finite brain cannot comprehend his infinity. He is beyond measure. He has gone way beyond our ability to reach in terms of reasoning. So in attempt to try and comprehend a God who is bigger than the brain that he has created, is going to become futile. You, you are already defeated before you, you start the, 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 the exercise. But the things that we then get to know about God, the Bible declares, it tells us that no man knows the things of a man save the spirit of a man in, in him or in a man. Then likewise, it then goes on to talk about the things which are of God, which no man can know, save the spirit of God in a 
a man or serve the spirit of God. So I'm starting from there. So we'll build our case on that just to prove certain points. Yes, Father. So that I help you know how to know. I want to help you know how to think. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. Thank you, yes. For what man knoweth the things of a man, mm -hmm. save the spirit of man which is in him. Yes. Even so. Even so. So that's a comparison now. Even so. This is what he really wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. So he gave an illustration before. Mm -hmm. That now he has come to the actual matter. Mm -hmm. Wanting to talk about the things of God. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the things of men. Okay. Now when it comes to the things of God. The things of God knoweth no man. No man has the capacity. No man has the ability mm -hmm. to know the things of God, anything that is of God, can no man know. Amen. By the things of God, don't just think of the spiritual things. Because God being a spirit, you assume the things of God, all of them are spiritual. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Including the physical. No man will ever know the things of God. Even if geography is the subject of God. Yeah. No man, including a man who has come out, with an A. He's still ignorant of that children. If the thing is of God, if the rock is of God, if agriculture is of God, your understanding of a plant cannot be human understanding. It's powerful. Mm. Everything that is in the class of God, yes. no human can understand. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to understanding, I hear people saying, ah, we are so educated as a nation. And then you, still you wonder, what is it that we know? <laughs> in a land, in a territory where education is the right education, yes. where the education that prevails in that community is the correct education, yes, gossip cannot survive. Mm -hmm. An educated mind mm. cannot harbor, it cannot cultivate, it cannot incubate rumor. Mm. Mm. Oh, the level at which people believe a lie mm -hmm. goes to show mm -hmm. their lack of comprehension mm. of facts mm. and truth. Mm. Whatsoever things are true, okay, mm. we'll get to that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get to that. Don't be quick to believe that you're educated because they've given you a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. awesome. Don't believe that. You can be deceived into believing that you are learned. And as much as you are learned, but understand that education comes in different fields. Mm -hmm. They yes. call them fields. So, here comes the knowing, the things that you think you know, if the things are of God, and the scripture here is saying, no man knoweth, knoweth the things of God, but the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God. So it's never given to men to know the things of God. But the things of God are known by the Spirit of God. So everything that is of God that you know as a man you know it by the Spirit of God in you or by the Spirit of God that you are. It's a function of the Spirit of God and not even of the brain. It is a function, your knowing of the things of God, the intelligence that you have with regards to the things of God is contained within the Spirit of God that you are. You, do, you, you know nothing as a man. You know everything 
that you know about God by His Spirit. So take note of something now here. So this goes to show that if we are to know the things of God by the Spirit of God, it means then God has given us an instrument with which to know Him. Yes. He has given us a part of Himself that is able to recognize Him. Okay, yes. So it is God then who knows Himself. Understood. Uh, that's too much. Yes, if we are to know the things of God by the Spirit of God, it means then that the knowing that we have of God is God's knowing of Himself. Hmm. I'll work on that. Yes, well. Let me try to work on that. Hmm. God wanting you to know Him. Yeah. He gave Himself. His Spirit is Himself. Yes. So that the things that you then think that you know about God, those things are known by God. <laughs> so God knows Himself. Same applies. There is no love for God that you have that He did not give you. The love you have for God yes. had to be given to you. Mm. You can't love Him with the love that you were not given. So the love that you have for God, yes. it is God that loves Himself. God is loving himself with the love that he has given to you. Because you, 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 you never had it from elsewhere. Mm. It had to be given to you by God. Mm. And it is with that love that you got from him that you get to love him. So, and look at this. Yes, you cannot know the things of God, but only by the Spirit of God. Yes. So he gave you the Spirit with which to know his things. Mm -hmm. Loving him. There is not even a single praise that you can ever give to God that he never gave to you. Uh -huh. So God praises himself. God loves himself. So. Mm. Even if God is to love us, yes. us being in his likeness and in his image, he's liking himself, he's loving himself. So Father, are all of these like transactions between God and himself, and we just happen to have been put into the mix somehow, but it's the spirit of God knowing the things of God, it's the love, from God given to us with which to love Him. Yes, but let's, we, we have to take it even in a broader sense where it is not just the Spirit of God that you have yes. that helps you know the things of God. But the Spirit of God that I am. Thank you. <laughs> so that you are not left out. All right. So that you are not just a victim. No. You are not on the receiving end. You must understand, perceive yourself to be that love of God. Mm, not only to be having the love of God. God in wanting to love himself, he made you in his likeness. Mm. All right. So that by loving you, it is himself that he is loving. It's so, clear. so you can only love God by his love. You can only know God by his spirit. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Are you following? Yes, following. Okay. So if you are to extrapolate that concept and then you put it into other facets, other areas of life, you also realize that the way that the brain was made by God, you are never going to know anything that is external, 
unless you have that something internally. Okay. We are never going to know something external mm -hmm. unless we have that something internally. internally. Just like you cannot know the outward things of God unless you have an inward spirit of God. That already knows. That knows. So you have, by you being a spirit of God or you having the spirit of God, what you have is an application. Mm. It's a program that God has put in you or you're a program that God has made. And you understand the things of God based on that programming. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying when it comes to the brain, right. human brain. I'm not going to try and give you what science has already given you. Thank you. I don't need, I don't need to waste time on that Thank one. So but that human brain that you have, when you start to think, what exactly do you think is happening while it's just thinking? If I cannot know God, or if I cannot know the things of God mm -hmm. as a man, and I can only know God by His Spirit, then it means it is the God in me that can recognize an external God or an external work of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? We're following. So. Whatever you can look at and you get to see and you get to know, it is known by what it is. There is the self of that external thing that you know. Yes. And then when you look at what you are looking at and then you get to know what it is, mm -hmm. yes. the it that you think you have known is known by the it that is a part of you. Wow. So follow this now. We're following, we're following. The way that your brain was meant, God gave you a brain, but the mind was created, okay. but was not given to the brain. The brain, when God made it, is an instrument with which you then can reach out into the atmosphere. Yes. And you can have access to thoughts, ideas, mm. and that is the mind. Yes, but for the brain to be able to think, yes. you must understand that God had to give you to think and God had to give you what to think. God had to give you an ability to think. Yes, and for that ability to be executed, there was a need for what to think. Okay. Hence the scripture is trying to guide us on what, what? to think. Okay. God cannot give you a brain. Yes, sir. And then he doesn't give you the mind. In as much as what was straight away put on you was not the mind. Yes. It was the brain. Yes. But the mind was put into the atmosphere by God. So that when you try to exercise your thinking, making use of your brain, yes. you reach out into the atmosphere and you extract material which is still in its raw form and it is processed by the industry called the brain. What comes out that you then call the mind is a, a refined product of a raw material that God had created, which when it was still in the atmosphere, it was not considered a mind. It was still in its still raw material form. And I can explain, I'll give you names of those things. What, are, what is that thought like yes. before you think of it? Yes. Yes. What was that idea? That the idea was in what form? Yes. Yes. 
mm-hmm. before you had it as a concept. Yes. Because it it needed to be refined. Mm-hmm. So it's the brain goes out into the atmosphere and it is extracted like um, it's a mining process mm-hmm. of a raw product and it gets processed by the machine called the brain. What comes out is the mind. So yes, we can say God needed to create the mind mm-hmm. so that the brain can then have access to the mind. Yes. But the mind was in what form? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes form. Why am I saying God cannot give you the brain and not give you the mind? Because God cannot give you an arrow and not give you the target. The moment God hands over an arrow to you, you must then begin to look for the target that he has already provided. Okay. Follow this. Yes, follow him. God cannot give Israel the power to possess mm-hmm. and not give Israel the people to dispossess. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Otherwise they can't exercise that power. You can't. So you know the moment God gives you something he cannot give you power and he doesn't give you what to lift. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. When he gives you power he gives you what to lift. Yes. <laughs> Jesus being a powerful God. Do you know just like when you try to study when Peter was drowning and Jesus extended his hand Peter was sure that he was now dying he had seen Jesus walking on water and then he said if this is you bid me to come and Jesus said go ahead and come yet Jesus was coming to them Jesus was coming. Yeah. But Peter wanted to also have a feel. If this is you, let me come. So Peter is now coming to Jesus who is coming. And then as he was walking on water, he started to observe mentally. His cerebral abilities were taken over. what he thought he knew the education yes. that he had acquired concerning the wind mm-hmm. and the storm mm-hmm. and the water mm-hmm. and the gravity mm-hmm. overpowered him which goes to show that everything that we learn adds weight mm-hmm. to us so even as you try to go forward in life it is what you know that takes you down mm-hmm. So the knowledge that Peter had was knowledge in form of weight. He began to drown. The knowledge that Peter had was knowledge in form of direction. It stopped him from going forward. And he started going down once. What he knew when he observed what they had taught him was what force of gravity had power over mm. Mm. so you have consumed so much what you have taken into your head is the gravity's favorite but remember what is it that jesus knew notice when jesus stretches for his hand and then he touches peter who is drowning by pulling up peter notice please do a study you need to do some mathematics here. <laughs> do you realize that jesus own body mass his own weight increased it was no longer his own personal weight yes. by pulling up peter mm-hmm. his own weight increased yet he did not sink even a little bit to compensate for that weight 
So it's just to show you that the ability that Jesus carries is not an ability, it's not power only sufficient for himself. To an extent where even if it's to pull up, because you're standing on water, mm -hmm. pulling up a fully grown up man to the surface of the water, his weight is supposed to be transferred on your body yes. in the process of trying to raise him up. So the power that you carry must be in excess as Jesus. Hmm? To, yes. Mm. Yes. Mm to be able to help him and you make him stand and then you, you restore him back to his ability to be able to experience that glorious, miraculous power of buoyance. You are there. You know that in terms of the way that you were made as a vessel, you're not supposed to be walking on water. But this is the question. Jesus has the ability to carry himself. Yes. And he has the ability to also carry those without an ability to carry themselves. Yes. And it doesn't change him a bit. Mm. So it goes to show you that he is the distributor of that power. He has it in access. If it's life, it's life in abundance. Yes. If it's healing that he has for you, it is working for him also yes. <laughs> not healing him but making sure he doesn't get sick mm -hmm. so when he heals you it's a surplus it's an overflow of what he's enjoying thank you so i would want us to really investigate this so that you know exactly what is happening please you can only comprehend these things by the spirit of god if I cannot know God as a man, and I can only know God by the Spirit of God, it means I can only know God by God. If I can only then know God by God, it's then God who knows himself. That goes beyond just knowing God. It goes to even everything else that you know. Everything that you know cannot be known by you. Anything that you know must be known by what you know. What you are knowing knows itself. So the brain that God gave you, you cannot give Adam an ability to choose. And you don't give him options. Mm -hmm. The tree cannot be one in the garden. And then you give him a privilege to then choose. Choosing from what? So there is need for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So that if you are to choose good, you have not chosen bad. So God cannot give you the brain and not give you the mind. God cannot ask you to choose and then he doesn't place life and death before you. So just by looking at the gift of the brain, you must appreciate that there was something else given apart from the brain, the mind. But he's not imposing the mind on your brain. He gives your brain the liberty to choose the mind. Whatsoever things are good, please think upon these things. When God created the mind, it was not in mind form. I've told you before, he opened his mouth and he declared, let there be light. And the light that appeared was light that would come against darkness and another light that would come against ignorance. Mm -hmm. So knowledge was formulated that day when light was declared. 
things to think about. Light be that was illumination, that was comprehension. Those were thoughts that were infused into the atmosphere by God even before the brain was formulated. So that the day that you are given brain, you are not wondering on what to think. There must be something already available in the atmosphere, in its raw state that you need to harvest by the instrument called brain. There is already something to think mm-hmm. of before you had a brain. Mm-hmm. So there's no moment of wondering. The moment you have the brain, already there is the mind available. There are things that are whatsoever good. <laughs> so he's training your brain on how to access the right mind. Wow. Wow. From the scripture from Genesis 1 verse 3, you've, you've quoted. That is when thoughts were implanted into the atmosphere. Yeah. And you're saying light are the good thoughts and darkness are the ignorant bad thoughts. And so, from the scripture you took us to, you're saying the writer is encouraging us with the two thoughts types in the atmosphere. We must go for light, mm-hmm. though both were created and are present in the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, the, and, and by going for the light, what goes for the light? The light. Because for you to know the light, it is the light in you that can recognize light. For you to know God, no man knows God but by God. (laughs) This is why the only people that can go out there looking for love and they find love are people that are good at loving themselves. The only people that will go out and they get married and they find love are people who were busy loving themselves so that it is the love they have that will find an external love. If you live a frustrated life, If you are bitter and you leave your house early in the morning, the bitterness in you will identify bitterness. You'll meet bitter people. You can only know God by the spirit of God that you are. So it is the spirit of God in you that carries the ability to recognize God, to know God. You cannot look for love and find love. It has to be love that finds love. If you are angry, (laughs) if your emotions are out of tune, you will hit yourself people of that same nature, struggling emotionally. And you wonder how come you Always, every time you find, even the people that propose you are always bad people. What are they gravitating towards? Tell me the good in you that keeps on recognizing those people because you know God by God. You love God by the love of God. You praise God by his praises. So what this goes to show is, I can elaborate on that. The brains are simply a body. It's a composition of cells, brain cells. There is a lot that scientists are going to learn 
maybe decades from now. Mm. <laughs> wow. The ability of those cells to transfigure, to mm. take on different forms. Explain it further. If we talk of thousands, even millions, even trillions of cells in the brain, we are talking of a community. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. <laughs> This is a gathering of individuals that are different in their nature, in their culture, in their language. Okay. Yes. Which becomes the constitution of the human brain. Every cell is different from the other. The same way that I've talked to you concerning the atmospheric cells yes. that are there to transmit light and darkness, yes. sound, smell, heat, yes. a lot of things. The, your brain, in as much as you have cells in your physical body, yes. you also have cells that are that are meant to function only in the brain. They are actually the composition of the brain. Those cells that God put in there are in what form? Yes, You must understand that anything that you know, it is known in terms of sound, in as much as you, it comes as words. And you have things that you know, and you know those things in pictures. You know things in images. Now, By knowing things in images, when you hear of a car, you know what a car is. If I'm to ask you what a car is, you are not only knowing it by words, mm -hmm. you have a picture, you have an image. Yes. That knowing doesn't only mean that you know it as in knowing but you have it in your brain as in its actual shape. Explain it for me. To an extent where you are, let me put it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an allegory, just to help people understand. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The moment you hear the word car, you have a cell yes. responsible of sound. Yes, it, okay catches sound, it keeps sound. So you might think it's a memory of what you might have had. But that cell, after having heard of that thing or that name called Ka, it's a hearing cell that captures that sound. Okay. Okay? Yes. And that cell must then migrate It has to run around within a myriad of other cells to identify a cell which is in the form of a car. Okay. Yeah. Then that name is attached to that shape of a cell. That's how you know what a car is. You know it in a picture, in a form, in a shape. It's not the shape per se that you know of a car. It is actually the shape of a cell that knows the car. When you see a car yes. being driven, yes. it is identified by a cell which carries that same form, that same shape, so that you know God by God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You love God by the, <laughs> by the love of God. So before you Before you knew anything, your cells were in, what in a state ready to be transformed. Okay. There was a moment when, even if you were to see a car, yes. you, 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 you didn't know what it was. Yes, that's true. Because you were not yet programmed. Okay. Those cells were, had not yet taken shape. So God placed your brain into a geographical territory so that you begin to study things around you so that when you see a tree, you will know the tree by the tree. It has to be the tree in you that knows the tree. 
So there must be something of the tree in your brain that identifies itself with what you're looking at. Okay, let me put it this way. Father, are you saying there is a physical tree in our brain? That is going to confuse some other people if we put it that way. <laughs> I know, of course, if I wanted to take that route, I, I can. Because you understand also that even physically, we were formed out of the dust of the earth. This is why in a human body, you have most of these materials minerals. Mm. God is there in a human body. Mm. Copper is there in, in oh, a physical. Wow. There are souls there. The iron is there. Wow. So how about the trees? So, so there is something already that you can see outward that you are. And that thing is known by itself. Huh. So, 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 okay, let me put it this way. Thank you, Father. Thank let you. me put it this way. Thank you. These cells are so cunning. This is why it becomes the, <laughs> the mysterious activity of the brain. You can't then extract that cell, put it under a microscope and see it in the shape of a car. That's the mysterious nature of the mind now. It's okay. And yet, yes. before you knew what a gun was, before you could see a gun, even if you were to hear the sound of a gun, you would not know. Yes. You wouldn't know that was a gun that I had. So let me put it this way, so that we put it in, into perspective. When you hear, <clears throat> what comes into your mind after having had a sound comes an activity that takes place in your brain, which is called the mind, that activity. Suddenly, when you say, that's a gun, it means a gun has featured. Yes. Having heard a sound, you didn't see, you heard a sound, yes. and then you say, that's a gun. Mm -hmm. It means prior to that, there was a process. Mm -hmm. There was a moment when sound was introduced yes. and a cell responsible for sound memorized, kept that sound. And then another cell in your brain had to take on the form of a gun. So that the next time you hear the sound, it is the cell that is responsible for the sound that moves around your brain mm -hmm. until it locates <laughs> a cell in form of a gun. And that becomes the unity, the marriage of the two. So if the two are compatible, yes. that is what you call understanding. It's like, oh. it's like, it's like, imagine, can you hear a sound and not know that's a gun? Yes. Because it's like when detectives get to a place that has just been broken into, they extract fingerprints. Yes. They have a way of lifting fingerprints and they take them into the lab. Yes. And then the next thing that they do is to feed those fingerprints into the system, mm -hmm. hoping the fingerprints of the suspect yes. has already been fed into the system. Mm -hmm. So it runs through the system looking for a perfect match. Wow. Yes. Yes, sir. So that's the pairing so that that which is known is known by itself. <laughs> the only way they can identify the culprit is when they had previously loaded the system with the fingerprints of the suspect. Yes. But if the fingerprints of the suspect was not <laughs> fed prior to this investigation, yes. it means this is a sound that is going to travel in your brain and you will never know it's a gun. Right. Please follow this. Follow, follow. Hmm. Follow. So, 
You might be wrong sometimes, it might be a tire burst. Even if someone comes and he says, no, that was not a gun, it was a tire burst. Suddenly, you have a picture, you have an image of a tire. Yes. And you agree with him because you were programmed before. It was fed into your system yes. to know what a tire is. So that sound when it comes, it happens like in a flash. Mm. When you say that's a gun, you are actually seeing a gun. You cannot hear of a word rabbit. And then a creature doesn't appear in your brain. Yes. That appearance of that creature is actually a cell that would have been found by a cell that had the word rabbit. Okay? Yes. So it is a coming together of those things. So you know in pictures, you know in words, you know in sounds. Yes. So it's an activity that is happening. So before you were programmed, before you could see it physically, there is no way that you could have a cell in your brain transformed into that shape. So uh, why am I telling you all this? So that you know that your attempt to want to go out there and find money, yes. there must be sufficient cells in your brain which are in monetary shape. Wow. You will never, I've told you before, I'm saying if you don't have love, you will never find love. If you don't contain and nature and cultivate joy, wherever you go, it is chaos. So it is the joy that you have worked on, that you have developed, that identifies external joy. How about money? So now I'm, sh I'm showing you this so that you understand. Let's say then you identify a million dollars. It is given to you through lotto. How come all of them Lot of winners are broke today. When that money external thing came, yes. there was nothing of that nature in the man wow. that could identify. Yes. So before a million dollar can be established in the life of an individual, there must be a million dollar mentality. Ay, 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 ay. How much of that external object do you have internally so that the money that you have is known by the money that you are. Uh, wow. uh, this is why then deep meditation upon success becomes key. Okay. So that you go out there searching for success and it is your, the successful you mm. that will find success. A failure, a failure <laughs> finds failure. Mm. So if you are going to live a life of abundance you want to be an abundant being mm. you don't go out there and you try to outsource mm. yes, yes, yes. abundance yes. Mm. no you must work on your brain until you become mentally abundant mm. Mm -hmm. but if you are running in scarcity if you are lacking mentally Guess what you find when you go out? Lack. You can only know God by the Spirit of God. You can only, you can only keep poverty by the poverty that you are. Not just the poor, the poverty that you are. If you're full of lack when you go out there, the lack that you are will find lack. So it goes also to show that even if you are going to be abandoned in lack, <laughs> you will still find lack in its abundance. <laughs> Lacking in abundance. You will still find lack in its abundance because you are abandoned in lack. Wow. You are going out there, what you are looking for you must have that already in you. Mm. So that when million dollars come, they are gravitating towards their, their mate. Okay. 
when money is mentioned it's a word mm. yeah it has to hunt for cells that are in that shape within in your head so that when money physically comes to you it is coming for its marriage mm. its reunion mm. it is uniting itself to itself mm. you know money by money mm. you know goodness by goodness mm. so meditation becomes key before you become successful meditate upon the laws of god and by so doing you shall make thy way prosperous mm. thank you whatsoever things are good think upon these things so you are programming you are wiring your brain allowing your brain to take on the form of what you are going to be hunting for mm. so when you go out there it's not the entire you that is going to yes find joy yeah. it is the joy in you that finds joy It is not all of you that is going to find money it is the money in you that finds money. Mm-hmm. How much of that money that you have inside of you will determine how much you will extract from your atmosphere from your environment. Damaged people are always damaging other people. Hurt people are always hurting other people. Yes. afflicted people all they know to do is to afflict others so before you even start to think of going out there and you kill an animal do you have a picture of the animal do you have a cell in your head that is of that shape of an animal because that cell is what is going to help you identify when that animal features wow 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 it will have to be fed into the database okay. so but what if the fingerprints were not in the database fed into the system yes it will come out no match so it's good to take your time ponder upon successful things and good things and then as you meditate upon that when you go out there <laughs> you are that already <laughs> money is not coming to make you rich no resources be it just become the gathering of what you are it will gravitate towards its its nature its tribe so it's coming because you are rich you are that you are rich you must be rich before you become rich money should not even come it's not even coming for you it's coming for its pay. Mm. Wow. Joy comes for its pay. Mm. Marriage is happening every single day not just among its people. Mm. Things are uniting themselves. That's why even the Bible talks about Jesus how he reconciled us back to God. Even the reconciliation of everything back to God. Wow. So you must understand that. Take your time. Mm-hmm. thinking about don't assume that this is another day terrible things are going to happen when you meditate upon terrible things guess what is going to happen terrible, terrible, things. terrible things are going to happen because you have just been fed you are programmed to witness yes. terrible things mm-hmm. it's going to be a struggle for you If you're going to find a person in your life and then you get married to a woman. Yes. And she doesn't contain she was not programmed <laughs> according to love. She doesn't know what love is. It's going to be a struggle. Your fingerprints are going to be running 24/7 in her system. Things that you do as a demonstration of love can easily be misunderstood mm-hmm. even the things that she does for the husband who is coming from an environment where there was no love there is no cell in his head which has taken on the shape of love <laughs> so everything you do for him as a wife 
he would consider it an insult. Mm. Mm. Because that was not prefed into his system. He lacks a cell that carries that form, that shape of love. So you are wasting your resources by feeding a fingerprint into the system, yes. but the system doesn't carry a copy of that. So you can only appreciate love if you are love. You know what love is because you had it already. <laughs> if you are busy looking down upon yourself, you meet people that will come to confirm your thoughts. If you are always accusing yourself, even where you know you are not wrong, you always meet people that are ready to confirm your thoughts and they will accuse you for what you never did. And you wonder, why is it that things are wrong every time around me? No. It's a certain energy, a frequency that you are emitting from your brain, which is the activity of the mind. Mm. And things of like nature are gravitating towards their tribe. Ah. Mm. These thoughts are there. Wow. God did not impose the minds on your brain. He gave your brain the ability to go out there and think upon these good things. Oh, wow. And as you do that, look at it. From God's own perspective, he's even saying, as a man thinketh, so is he. Every part of your body, do you, do you know that, okay, breathing is a function of the brain. To think there is a part of the brain that regulates breathing. You are thinking of breathing every time you breathe. Mm. Mm. You are thinking of breathing. And that part, if that part forgets mm. to remember to breathe, mm. you die. Mm. No, there, there's not even a single part of your body. Imagine yes. digestion yes. is a function of the brain to think that you are thinking of digesting. You can't even think of that because you, do, you are not aware of that thought. Sure. Yet the brain is already thinking. That's why you are able to digest. So signals are being sent to every part. So as a man thinketh, yes. so is he. You are what you are thinking. You are what you are thinking. <laughs> That's why then you, you see be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind. I beseech you by the mercies of God. Ah, we know, we know, we know, don't worry. Transformation of life is as a result of the renewing. You approach the human mind by the mind, if we can change what you are thinking, if we can influence your brain yes. to get rid of the wrong mind that you have and then you get the right mind, mm. it becomes the transformation of the entire being. Mm. So in every sector that you find yourself in, whether it's a gathering or it's a group that you belong to, it's a church. Yes. Prefer a ministry that addresses your brain. It is only that ministry that is capable of bringing transformation to its members. Wow. Yes, if I can influence you to think and advise you on not to pick death, pick life, eat the tree of life, don't eat the tree of knowledge. Then you become your thinking you become your reasoning. Do you have it in your head? What is your highest level of success that you've had as a concept? What do you consider success? What do you consider abundance? You have raised your brain to that level of thinking and your life, when you get there, you get stuck. Mm. 
What makes you think that having a lot of money will destroy your relationship with God? You have thought it's a mind that you have acquired and you can only serve God to that level of acquisition or abundance or lack. How come with you insufficiency would mean the arrival of God? <laughs> Yet when the same God is to approach Peter with a different business mentality, he performed a miracle which is called the great drought or a great catch to an entrepreneur a business-minded individual, not a church folk, not a Pharisee. Yeah. Jesus went into the business sector. He went to the sea. Yes. And in order for him to convince them that he was Lord, yes. he raised them, he pushed them into abundance. Yes. The catch was great yes. to a point where Peter said, I'm a sinner. There was no preaching on righteousness. Ah. Simply multiplication, increase on money. Mm. He began to confess his sins. Mm. It depends with your mentality. <laughs> with your mentality. They left everything and followed him because he had demonstrated abundance, not lack. Yeah, <sighs> so what's the reason behind your following God? I don't follow God because of his things. <laughs> What's the reason why you follow him? If it's not because of what he has given. He has given life. That's why we follow him. Yes. Wrong mentality. So if you can enlarge your capacity to conceive, if you can ponder upon certain lights that God has spoken into being, which are in form of thoughts, <laughs> and you meditate upon these things, you are becoming that, even before you acquire them. You are becoming that. So, whatsoever things be pure, think upon these things. What is the danger of not thinking upon the pure? You attract the impure, the imperfect. So it's an exercise that you can start at any time. Reprogram your brain. Thank you, Father. Yeah. You have chosen wrong thoughts. Thank you. So what do you do? Now I'm coming back to the issue that I've told you about, that if you had set your brains on the right path, there are things that you should never think about. Things should be of a good report. Those are the things that you should think about. There are certain books that you, should, you must never read. Because by reading certain things, you have chosen what you want to know. And yet what you want to know in that instance is useless. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you have chosen? Do you know what you have not chosen by choosing? Okay. If you choose to go, you have chosen not to stay. Mm -hmm. If you choose to run, you have chosen not to walk. What do you know what else that you have chosen? That's why people can go to school and they have the right to choose the subjects. I want to do chemistry. How about Shona language? You say, I'm not interested. By choosing chemistry, you have just chosen what you don't want to know. What you don't know is what you have chosen not to know. It's a choice. It's given to the brain to choose its mind. You can make a decision today. I want to be better in a certain area, but that area is not external. First and foremost, the area has to be nurtured within you so that when you identify that area, that external area yes. is identified by an external developed what? Area. So that you know God by God. Mm. 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 <laughs> mm. So
so that when you see a tree, it is the tree in you that sees a tree. You see? How come you can pick a glass of water, even if, even if it's orange juice, and you drink and you say something is wrong right. with mm. this orange juice? Yes. There's a pre-programmed test. There is the original state in its pure form that you have thought of, wow. that, you, that you have tested before, and it was kept as memory. Wow. So when you come across the impure, there is no, there's no match. There is a conflict between the two. This cannot be orange. There is something else with this drink. I'm not interested. You don't like it. Why? Who is saying I'm not interested? It's not even you. It is the orange. <laughs> I cannot get married. I cannot be unequally yoked to that external orange. We are not of the same nature. That's how you know things are wrong mm. because you are full of right. Wow. That's how you know danger when it's about to okay because you are full of peace. Wow. 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 But then you resist now. You resist. You can say, I don't want to have violence into me because it's not what I carry. Mm -hmm. You don't give it access. There cannot be a union of these unlike pause, you resist things that are not yourself. I cannot be, I can, I cannot be shortchanged. I cannot be downtrodden. That's not what I'm practicing. I never thought of that. Why should it happen to me? If it's to happen, it's an occurrence, but it can't be permanent. Thank you. So the act of resisting, Father, is that by virtue of um, continual meditation on the right thing, mm -hmm. how, how do we go about resisting the wrong thing when, it's, when it is gravitating? It's not you. It is the right thing. It is the right thing that has to resist the wrong thing. Oh, right. Yes. So that responsibility is given to that right to thing. That right thing. So what you need to work on now is developing that right thing. All right. That okay. right mentality. Right. I'm not poor. Right. I was programmed growing up by my environment to become poor and to be a borrower. It's a program in your brain, All right. which is a wrong mind. Thank you. And for a transformation of life to occur, there's need for the renewing. Mm. Yes, and for you to renew the mind, that the renewing of the mind is the renewing of the brain. But we have to replace. Mm. We have to delete certain thinking patterns that you have acquired from your ancestors. Mm -hmm. Wrong concepts concerning money. Then we reprogram you now. We feed you with the right things. These are brethren. Think upon. These are brethren. Had he not advised them, yet they are brethren. They are born again. Things would always go wrong. Why did Jesus say, worry not? Mm -hmm. You should not worry. Take no thought mm -hmm. about tomorrow. The thought is the worry. Mm -hmm. He's the manufacturer. He gives us a manual on how we're supposed to run our bodies. Mm -hmm. And he says, guys, danger is going to happen if you are to worry. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to say, tomorrow must worry about its own things. Yes. So it goes to show you, he's already telling you that days are intelligent. To, to, to hear the Lord telling you that mm. it has to be the day, mm. thinking, worrying mm. about. Mm. So there is the brain of the day. Mm. There is the mind of the day. Mm. And you should never think on its behalf. Mm. When you inherit the thought of the day and you personalize it, it makes you sick. Mm. Your blood pressure will, 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 will rise up. Because mm. it's not your brain, it's a borrowed brain. <laughs> the day must worry mm. on its own on, for its own things. Mm. Though it's put in different translations, yes. versions, the way it's as if it's, 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 it's something to do. But how come God himself, when he talks about the birds of the air, Okay, yes. the animals of the field. And he talks about the flowers. He goes, he gets to a point where he says, Your heavenly father provides. Yes. 
for them. What is the idea? He's not even calling God the father of the birds. <laughs> he is your father and yet he is supplying the birds because they have a better understanding of their creator. He is your father, but he is not providing you at that level. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, mm. neither do they reap, mm -hmm. nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father. Their heavenly father. The, your. You are suffering. So all of these creatures are strangers. They are servants. Mm. Yet they have access to your father's provision because of their understanding. Mm. Wow. <laughs> mm. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, mm -hmm. for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it says, Jesus is not saying don't plan. Because somebody is saying, so am I not supposed to plan? Mm -hmm. No, planning and worrying, those are two different things. He's saying don't worry. Mm -hmm. Also, he's also saying, even if you are to think that you no, know, tomorrow doesn't think because tomorrow doesn't exist. Maybe he's saying, when I get there, I will then have to think. So it's a tomorrow thought when I get to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But still, that mind that will think properly tomorrow has to be worked on today. Mm -hmm. I've told you before, you will never think when you get to tomorrow, it's a today. So you must be thinking of now so that when you get into the future, it's a now. And you are thinking in the now. So work on your reasoning. Don't allow people to give you education that will add to your weight and gravity will feast on you. You are being drowned by the things that these people have told you that you know. Why do you allow those people to, to call you Mr. So-and-so, Dr. So-and-so, and you know you have no money? Why believe them? Why believe them? Yeah, what I'm knowing, if it cannot result in giving me joy, what, what, what is the point? But like I've told you before on Sunday, we are living in an environment where people cannot investigate the truth. These are people that you can tell, I'm uneducated. They don't investigate. Even if everything that is happening around you proves that you're educated, you just tell them, I'm uneducated. They will start to insult you, he's uneducated, that one. No investigation. That's why also, in an uneducated guy, when he comes and he says, I'm educated, he's believed. they believe also that he's educated. Mm. Mm. <laughs> So we are living in an environment where somebody can show you everything. He buys a new phone, he wants you to see it. He buys a new car, he takes a picture. Mm. Even though the car is borrowed, whether it's a new shirt, everything else, there's a picture of it. But you never get to see the degrees. <laughs> you never see it on the wall. Mm. But the moment you show it, now we know the university. And the investigation can start. <laughs> These are people that you can tell things and they believe it because they, they have not mastered the art of thinking on things that are of good report, things that are true. Thank you, <laughs> so, 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 you can meet somebody that you say, ha, this guy has a lot of money, but his reasoning. He's an educated, he's an educated in what area? <laughs> when it comes to money, there is, <laughs> there is <laughs> too much cells in his brain that are of that in nature. Wow. He doesn't know everything else. That's why if you try to interview, you ask him, how did you, he cannot even explain. But he has worked on his brain and there has been abundance. He meditated upon success only along that line. Only along that line. How can a man be playing football and he gets into maybe 20 million, 50 million worth dollars? 
And then the moment he breaks his leg, he stops playing, he just needs a few months. The man is broke. Mm. He sharpened his brain only towards the skill. So his legs are up to date. Yes. Wow. But no cells that are in money shape, in money form. Wow. He has no understanding of finances. Wow. Yet his legs were bringing in money, but there is no proper pairing. Mm. In his brain, there wasn't any what? Money. Any money. Okay. How come he was not aware that a leg can break at any moment? Mm. How come the musician is not aware that you can lose your throat at any moment? Mm. Mm -hmm. No more albums. As you were working on your voice, you were also supposed to work on your brain mm -hmm. so that you invest what the voice brings in terms of money. Your brain is active, knows what to do with the money that, that the gift is bringing. So you need to keep on working on yourself, developing. Once you are married, you are in the house, work on your brain. Because that marriage is going to take on the form of your brain. Love in your house is going to be according to your understanding of love. Wow. Why do people fight? They are coming from fights. Mm. That's what they grew up seeing. Right. So you marry such a woman, you take her out of a violent environment into a peaceful environment, she will start to walk. Because mm. okay. she feels she cannot survive outside of an environment that brought her up. Mm. Conflicts after conflict, and you wonder, but how did we get to this place where we are now insulting each other? A nice story that it ends up like you are taking up arms. Mm -hmm. Why? Your mate is a product of violence. So the violence in here will always attract violence. So she has to work on her mind. You need to work on your mind. Think upon whatsoever things are good. Take your time and you meditate upon these things. This is why you cannot be watching a violent movie before you go to bed. Your experience during the night becomes violent. So take your time. The last 10 minutes, while you're trying to get your sleep, you have to be thinking upon the good things things that are supposed to be so lovely. Thank you. Ma? Yes, please. Yes. Our idea of love. I was laughing one day when I was watching a certain um, um, YouTube video. You know, these guys that are doing some short clips. Yeah. He just walks in the streets and then he, he finds a beautiful girl and then he hands over a flower. I think he might have come across. Yes, and he hands over a flower and then he walks away. Mm. And then you see the girl takes the flower and next to the flower there is a letter that says you look so beautiful, keep smiling. Though she wasn't smiling, you see her smiling. And what they do every time is to smell the flower and they start to look for the guy and he's nowhere to be found. It's an environment, they, they were nurtured under that environment of love. You try that in Africa, you give <laughs> It can become another story. <laughs> what are you trying to do? It's not in us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe if you want to make it, it has to be money. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste money on flowers. <laughs> it has to be cash. But I'm just saying, it's, a, it's an environment for that. All right. Such a video makes sense in that context because that mentality has been developed. It can be as pure as that with no other uh, hidden intentions. Mm -hmm. Just wanting somebody to be happy. Mm -hmm. But you do it to somebody here, someone might not even have time to smell the flower. Mm -hmm. Stressed, depressed, mm -hmm. disappointed. Mm -hmm. They are not seeing where they are going, they're just walking. Something is wrong with the mind and it requires a reprogram. Thank if we can reprogram you, get you to think properly, even when God puts you into abundance, the abundance that you are, 
you will not backslide because of too many fish. Wow. You will follow God. You will follow Jesus because of abundance. Wow. Let's stop there for today. We'll continue. We'll see whether we continue with this one or we get into other gifts. But this gift, you have it. It was given to you by God. Don't say God has never given me the right life, the correct life, a good life. No, you were given the brain with which you can then choose the kind of a life that you desire. Make a decision today. Stop blaming your mother, your father. The brain was given to you. The mind is all over the place in the atmosphere. Whatsoever things are good, make a decision today. Yes, I'm coming from a broken family, but I can reprogram myself now and correct things around me. I don't want to see negativity around me because you carry negative energy. Yes. Cultivate that positive energy. And as you go out there loving yourself, what you find is love. And that love is found by love. When you leave your house joyfully, you will find joy. And who finds that joy? The joy within you. Thank you, pastors. I pray for you that God will empower you. God will show you the reason why he gave you the power. He knew there was going to be weight. He knew there was going to be a burden. Don't tell him that I have a burden. When he gave you the power, it was predictive. It was prophetic that you were going to encounter burdens. So he gave you the power to carry the Lord and you can carry the Lord. You can make a decision today. I don't want to remain in this same place. The moment you decide that, movement will begin. You will not be stuck in that state forever. As long as the state is not stuck in your mind, make a movement. Make a movement. I'm not broke. I'm not poor. I am not sick. I'm a child of God. I'm not an enemy of God. I'm a child of God. God loves me. He favors me. He prefers me. And as I go out, I flourish and I blossom. There shall not be any difficulties that I will ever encounter in my way. If I come across a stumbling block, I have the ability to fly. God has given it to me. So I will never be disappointed. I'm loved by God and I love God and I love God by God, and I know God by God. Child of God, exercise your mind. Become abundant in your thinking. Envision. Some people might think it's fictitious. You can't think of a car if you don't have it. You have to. It sounds foolishness, but that's the idea. How are you going to think What's your feeling like if you were to have your own house? What is your feeling like if you were to have your own car? That feeling still can be created. That's why the body can be cheated. Your body will begin to agree with a thought. That is why thoughts can make you sick. It's an agreement. The body agrees to fears, fears of things that are non-existent and yet your body can swell. Your body can be sick because of a fear of a non-existent calamity. Nothing is coming. So what if you begin to think of abundance? What if you agree that you have a house? What do you think is going to happen? Your body will be in alignment. The same way you thought of death 60 years ago, you're still alive. But your body has agreed with that wrong thought and you are sick today because of a wrong thought. So a bo your body can be deceived, it can be cheated. But you can cheat it in a right way. When you believe that you are prosperous, you are rich, your body gets programmed it will start to support you. 
and when that idea is supported, you begin to flourish. Don't think upon lack. Child of God, I don't know, pastors, if people are really getting this. That's it. This is the solution. Thank you. For You're ending over the keys to life. Yeah. Because this, you've corrected so many misconceptions that we held about how thoughts are. We thought we created thoughts. Mm. But you've shown us that the mind is in the atmosphere mm. and we can extract thoughts. Mm -hmm. And we have the power to choose. Choose any what field, to think. What to think and what we think. And we become that. Become. Ah, Father, your ministration at the end reminded me of what you delivered at the beginning of the year. And you said you're going to show us how healing can be administered and yet it is not healing mm -hmm. that we are used to. Mm -hmm. And here you're talking to us about thoughts that can disrupt the body, mm -hmm. where someone can get sick. And yet here is the diagnosis. Healing can be administered, no longer external healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But even by a realignment and renewal of that mind. Yes. Healing can actually take place internally mm -hmm. by restructuring the Co mind. Correct. And thinking correctly. Yes. Father, one of the most striking spiritual ideas that you've enlightened us to through this delivery Father, the mind is something that scientists have written mountains of books on. Mm -hmm. And the brain itself, about how the brain works. works to think yeah. that we have the gray matter is not just gray matter sitting there mm -hmm. with electrons running around a neural network. And all the neurons, yes. Yeah. It's more than just that. Yeah. It's made of individual cells mm. that have the ability to transform themselves. themselves, whether it's appreciating sound, mm. whether it's transforming into a car, mm -hmm. into a tree, mm. into a house. Yeah. To imagine, Father, which then pushes us to want to understand further the, this idea that you taught about how things can be brought from a conscious perspective and sunk to the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Possibly, maybe, is that the solidification of that picture? Mm -hmm. The keeping of the peace <laughs> where the mind, where an idea can no longer be robbed. Mm -hmm. I, I... I'm just realizing that we didn't touch on the subconscious mind. The conscious mind. <laughs> That's for next week. We, maybe we're maybe we'll try to work on that. Thank you. Excited excited for so but in case people argue with what we are teaching, yes. the same people that might say, this is unpractical, mm -hmm. this is nonsensical, this doesn't, this is not logical. The same people, yes. you ask them a very simple question. Yes. If you cannot cheat your body into believing, mm -hmm. what is the placebo effect? Hey. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Tell me scientifically, placebo doesn't work. It works. What are they addressing if it's not the mind? Mm -hmm. And you heal a portion away from the brain. Mm -hmm. That's cheating the body into believing mm -hmm. that it is being cured wow. and it gets cured. Wow. So where were you sick? Upstairs. Mm -hmm. Where are you poor? Not in your bank account. You measure the distance between your brain and your bank account. It's miles apart, and yet you are, you are poor over here. So think, believe that you are a millionaire. Let's see what will begin to happen. Wow. How your body, wow. how your cells will gather and agree to that. Wow. 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 I'm well. This disease cannot kill me. I'll wow. kill it. And healing starts from, from that point. Yeah. Remember I told you before that you, if you are a healer, you must have the ability to heal yes, people in three places. Yes, you heal them where they are sick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, if it's a shoulder, shoulder. you heal it yes. from the shoulder. Yes. The next place, you heal the mind. Yes, place. Next place, yes. their environment. Yes. You heal people physically, 
where they are hurt, you can feel it and you move on to the mind. You say, no, it's no longer here. You are programmed to the pain. You have made a relationship with the pain. You are now one with the pain mentally and you heal him mentally. That's where Peter then stretched forth his hand and lifted up the man at the beautiful feet because he realized that he's already healed, but mentally he's still crippled. Mm -hmm. So he had to physically pull him out of his situation where he was already delivered from. Mm -hmm. And he realized, ah, ah, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But he was still seated there. Yeah. So mental healing. Mm -hmm. Then the last one, the environment. Can you heal the environment? Some of the people are sick because of their environments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you begin to preach success so that they drink proper water, clean water, the environment, there's no mosquito. It's success of the environment. Because the environment was poor, it promoted the disease. So that's the, that's the wholeness of that gift of healing. Can you heal a person? Okay? Who is asthmatic? Can you heal the mind? Can you then go and heal prophetically the atmosphere? There is something in your environment, in your house, that is causing your lungs to behave like that so that you deliver that person from a wrong environment, a wrong mentality, and also the disease is, mm. is taken away from him. Wow. 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 People are being made sick by their atmospheres. Father, if that man at the beautiful gate, if he had not been assisted to stand so that his mind is able to appreciate that he has been healed, mm -hmm. Is it possible that he would have continued sitting there, being carried for the remainder of his life? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Because every part of your body is represented in the brain. So when you look down and you see that's my leg, it's a leg in your head that sees the leg. Wow. You know God by God. Yes. And doctors have since confirmed there are people whose fingers have been cut. Yes but they still can feel the pain at the, at, the, at the nails, at the tip of their, they still can feel it. There's phantom pain. Yeah. But they can actually, doctors have confirmed, somebody without a leg, he feels like scratching his leg. Doctors can, can tell you that. Yeah. The leg which is not even there. But it's still there. Also, if they are dreaming, is the leg missing? Is there? It's there. Their dreams are there. So they removed it physically, but they could not amputate it in the brain. Wow. So every part is there, remains intact. So to heal that person from that leg pain, the leg which is not there, you should be able to go and delete the leg from the brain of the man. Then he becomes free. Hmm. And that becomes a supernatural work which doctors cannot do. They don't know which part exactly represents the leg. Hmm. Ah, this is so profound. You see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You would have continued that man. And you, people like, there are so many people that God has blessed, but their understanding of the blessing, they're still people today. Wow. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings, but how many of us are away? Thank you. Yes. Until we begin to work on renewing the mind. Okay. By renewing it, what we're taking out is the old wow. mind, mm -hmm. which is wrong, mm -hmm. which is negative. Mm -hmm which is untrue mm. and replace it with the truth no child of God. Don't wake up every morning. Don't go to bed every night thinking the devil is after you. He's afraid of you. He's tired of you. Which is the reality. Yeah. That's what it is. Then you should be thinking of demons from the village every night. Demons from the village, they should be thinking of me from town. <laughs> Yeah, you say yeah. don't fear what fears. Yes, don't. Don't. He goes on to talk about power, virtue. Think upon power. Mm. Yes. Father. Think upon these things, uh, Father, you not weakness. Father. You're freeing. <laughs> if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, ah. think on these things. That's the principle. So that's what you are going to be doing throughout. I'm not saying if something is wrong, you don't say it. But hear me. You have to meditate, think upon good things. If 
is time to rejoice and to be happy. Don't be thinking. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. Why are you thinking of death at a, at a wedding? Why are you thinking of a funeral? Mm. It's the wrong place. Yes. Why are you thinking of an accident while you are driving? Mm. Think of arriving. Mm. Think of things that you're going to do when you get home. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. Why should you be complaining of everything? Traffic, you are in a jam, you are complaining about this, about the weather. It's a moment for you to think, mm. to listen to the music mm. and to meditate. Let your brain become even more active wow. in its creativity. Wow. I'm buying time while I'm here. What else can I do while I'm here mm. waiting instead of complaining? Mm. So you're living a positive life and everything becomes good. By the time you get to the office, problems that you would have would have taken you two years to solve. Wow. Why? Because you are looking at the same situation with a different mindset, a well-polished mind. We don't want to start again, Sorry, right? Sorry, bro. <laughs> hey, we don't want to start again. It's time for people to go now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ah, immensely blessed, uh, richly transformed. Now, now we understand why. And we continue to understand why it's important for us to gather like this, because there is a transformation, there is a renewal of the mind. And the goodness that is being given to us here is found within us, and then by that we become what we know. Shalom. Have a wonderful evening. Ten minutes before you go to bed, think on goodness. Until we meet again next time. Shalom.